Welcome back to Whiskey Podcast episode 16 this time. Um, I'm obviously still David, my co-host is still Josh, and still uh, Josh. today we're still doing Incredible Indies, but uh, this time it's Douglas Lang. Yeah, I'm not um, sparkling, Josh. Oh, ho, ho. oh. You get it? You get it instead of <laughs> <Yeah>. still? <laughs> this is a joke from not here the side in my... <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, this time round it's a again obviously a dram team box, not sponsored unless they want to, and then we'll take it. But yeah, we're yet. shameless. Yeah. Um, this is a collection of whiskies from uh, Douglas Lang, independent bottler. So the title card from uh, this box says. In this special edition, Incredible Indies box, we highlight an absolutely barnstorming selection of whiskies from Dram Team indie bottling favourite Douglas Lang. Tuck into some real treats as we explore Scotch whisky with the very best of their genuinely incredible range, Slange. So, without further ado, do you want me to bring to us into the first one? For the first whisky, yeah. Righty, oh then. Okay, so the first one, um, as as just said, they're all Douglas Lang. So the first one is uh, Double Barrel, Speyside and Lowland, which is probably my... Uh, no, I don't know, actually. Campbelltown's big on my list as well, but they're up there. Um, we absolutely love the Double Barrel concept. It's the ultimate in blending minimalism, being, being a blended malt made from just two casks. In this case, one from a Speyside distillery and one from a Lowland distillery. In many ways, we'd say it was more of a single cask hybrid malt than a blended malt. But we don't think the Scottish Whiskey Association would like us if we put that on the label. Regardless, a brilliant way to make whiskey. So on the nose, it is fragrantly fresh, carrying a fruity quality, so we know what you'll smell, plus a sweet, gristy character. Let's have a, have a sniff. I'm sniffing lots of fruit, so I'm hoping to get papaya. <laughs> I'm joking. Papaya, very, very fancy. Yeah, there's quite a lot of fruit in that. So on the palate, while you dive in, we've got a sweet, still fruity with honey and vanilla. And the finish is softly spiced with an orange zest. What do you get from that? Mm. It's quite spicy, but that might just be because it's the first one we've had. And my, Could be. Um, well, it's quite spicy on the back end, though. Yeah. Um, definitely sweet. Mm. Yeah. I could definitely I'm sure get I'd say sort of, fruity. I can get the honey flavours more than anything. Or a, a syrupiness. Like a... Not quite creamy, but like a thick sweetness. Yeah, I've just gone in for a second taste, and it's definitely spicy on the back end. It's making mm. the tongue tingle a bit. Not in an unpleasant way. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, I'll go with that. So kind of a um, fruity on the nose, spirit, uh, spirit, syrupy. It's kind sweetness. of more citric than the classic pear note for me, I would say. like you On the nose? Like a warmer orangey. Yes, okay. Citric fruitiness on the nose. How about that? Mm-hmm. Citric fruitiness on the nose. Syrupy sweetness on the palate. With a fairly hefty spice towards the end. Yeah, it's, uh, the spice builds. Like yeah. when you first swallow it, it's not spicy. Yeah. But yeah. then your mouth sort of. Yeah, and it's only forty six percent, so I'm not going to say that like the alcohol's overpowering it, and it's just making my mouth. I think we're too inured to yeah. to percent alcohol percentages for it to be the alcohol doing that. Yeah. After last time. Oof. Yeah, especially if you you went in. Did you drink them all then? Yes, I did. Jeez. I was quite drunk. Yeah, but <laughs> in the words of uh, a character from Harry Enfield and Chums, an old school reference for people who are obviously our, our audience. Yeah, I was. A very, very drunk. <laughs> Not a bad impression. I'll give you that. Um, yeah, that was different. I was expecting something milder from a space side Lowland because they're both, especially Lowland, are quite known for the kind of mild, understated almost. Unless they're sherried. Do you know what I mean? Mm. None of them I'd say is particularly spicy. So, uh, interesting. Certainly interesting. Um just rearranging my screens a second so have you got any comments scars what would you what would you like to say um 
I've still got the spiciness rolling out. It's a very long, spicy finish is what I would say. It is, yeah. But that's the takeaway note on that one for me. Very so. long, spicy finish. I'll give you that. And how are we starting today with scores? Um, I want to say, obviously didn't hate it, didn't particularly rate it, go for three. I've gone for a three and a half. I quite like that. Uh, used to their own and all that, as they say. Yeah, I'm allowed to be wrong. Or I'm allowed to be wrong. One of the two. Um, But between us, we're we're always right. On my trip that I will probably talk about in the middle, but I'm Mm -hmm. prefacing everyone that I went on a sort of solo-ish trip, which Josh wasn't on. You know, it's hard to travel about the country in... uh, Especially to go from England into Scotland, you might get met at the border with, you know, <coughs> violent mobs. I'm quite a Scottish Olympian. Yeah, uh, but then also just to make long trips on public transport is a bit risky right now. Bit of a bad move. Um, so, but yeah, we I was up with uh, my partner, I suppose we'll say. Yeah. Bit, bit of a wanky way to describe it, but you know, don't want to give too much away. Um, True. And uh, we were up in the region, so... At some point later on, when we're a bit more on the flow, I'll break up the flow by discussing that. <laughs> just as we built a nice steady flow, just break it. Yeah. Well, maybe help us like sober up so I don't get absolutely smashed by the end. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> Although these are a bit weaker, so you should be safe. Yeah. Okay. I will hand yeah over to you to introduce us to our second whiskey of the evening. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I feel like we might have had a this provenance one before. I don't think we've had this particular one, but I think we've had a provenance. Yeah. But anyway, this is the... Uh, obviously, again, it's uh, Douglas Lang, but this is Old the... Old Dougie L. Yeah. Provenance, Blair Atoll, 12-year-old, sherry-matured, single malt. The card says, The provenance range is a great entry point for exploring single cask whistly. Hmm, whistly? What's that? Whistly. <laughs> yeah. It's when oh, whiskey's died and come back. We need to get into already. What's that? Sorry. It's when whiskey's died and come back. Right, yeah. But, uh, so, single cask whiskey. Mainly very affordable. This particular Blair Atoll expression is a little more on the special side, having been matured for 12 years exclusively in a refill sherry butt. Boom, boom. Mm. Uh, surprisingly pale for a sherry matured dram, the sherry influence shows more on the palate than anywhere else. Well, I mean, that's what you want it mostly, isn't it? Yeah, who cares about smell? I mean, it's part of the experience. But... Mm, it does smell very sherry. <laughs> that means it's going to taste very sherry. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so the nose should be sugary and honeyed up front, runs to wonderful barley and mature fruit. I get the kind of like caramelized sugar that you get from sherry. Yeah. Like creme brulee. I could probably yeah. fall into the honeyed kind of chat as well. Yep, creme brulee. Um, you're getting the honey. mature fruit at the end. Don't know if that means overripe. Or... What do you call a mature fruit? Uh, I feel like an apple's a mature fruit. A mature what? fruit's like a tangerine. That's a pretty immature fruit. I think a banana's pretty immature. Cause you don't banana's know pretty immature. Yeah, there's lots of imagery I mean, around banana, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of immature imagery around bananas as well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's immature. a great fruit, don't get me wrong. Best it is. Probably one of the best ice cream flavours. No. One of us had. No, it's not even in, like, top ten. Top two for me, but yeah. I mean, it's it's probably better than the other fruity ice cream flavour of strawberry, but it's no chocolate or vanilla, is it? I'd put it above both of them. Like, pure straight chocolate. Boring. Uh, what would you put as... So, if this is your number two, what's your number one? A uh, chocolate chip. Oh, it's, <laughs> that's the worst ice cream. Nah, if you get like the right pistachio one... pistachio ice cream, is that your number three? What? Oh, I hate pistachio. Oh, that's all right. I was, I it's wondered. like tablet or... Or uh, honeycomb probably for number three, but well, we don't have tablet down here. But I have tried it up there, I think, can I? Yeah, it's basically I think I tried uh, tablet, like a, but not ice cream. Crumbly fudge, dry, slightly drier fudge. It's, it's just that, sugar in it, pretty it's, much. It's literally pure sugar. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It, speaking of, just as a segue, I made a pecan pie on the weekend, and it was very nice. So, see, this is a, this is an interesting thing with nuts because like, oh, a pecan pie that sounds terrible, but then mm. actually, almonds make chocolate it, better. Yeah, I don't Hazel generally like make on their own, like in a trail mix or whatever. If you had pecans in it for whatever reason, wouldn't like it. But 
I had a pecan pie when I was on holiday with my family a bit ago and it was lovely and I was like I wonder if that was just like a one-off you know they just did a really different peak and pie to normal yeah so I was like I said I'm gonna make one so I made one uh, you know I do my cooking with my mum on Sundays mm-hmm. so I made one and I was like this isn't gonna work because the pastry cracked and like the filling looked like it was all spilling out I was like this isn't gonna work and it worked and I've had three slices since Sunday and it's it's good I need Proper to up the fizz cooking. otherwise I'm just gonna get fat because it's very nice so yeah, it's nice. Proper whole cooking. Doesn't have to look the part, just has to taste the part. Exactly. Yeah. Right, I'm going to dive in. What, what yeah. am I meant to be tasting? Uh, on the palate, you should uh, catch its sherry heritage, dark macerated fruit, and home baking and spice. With a finish, spices are more apparent than malt, followed by a cold minty finish. Shame you don't like mint ice cream, innit? Cause... I think they mean like a refreshing, like a toothpaste finish. Yeah. But I don't get that. But I do get this, the sherryness. This is lovely. This is exactly our kind of whiskey. Good. good. It's it's that it's pale as well. But then again, you know. Yeah, it's well. that like you say that dark fruit. Home baking is definitely in there. I get that. Um, kind of like those Christmas spices, you know, like the ginger warming spice rather than hot spice or sharp spice. And it does build it a little bit. It's not as spicy as the last one. On the nose, it's kind of treacly. Yeah, that's why I kind of captured by creme brulee, you know, kind of like... Yeah, burnt, yeah. Yeah, 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 just when it's turning. Oh, that's lovely. I suppose maybe that could also be mature fruit. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so I'm going to say dark fruit, uh, Christmas spices. I get a little bit of chocolate from that. I don't know if you do, but I definitely get a little bit of chocolate. What do you get from that? Yeah, I can see what you mean. More of a milk chocolate than a traditional yes. sort of dark chocolate flavour. Yeah, 100%. Um, no bitterness, it's just very smooth. It's like into the sort of realms of like a chocolate mousse. Yes. Like, very it's like it's a rich chocolate, chocolate but not yeah. a dark chocolate. Yeah. So not like a dairy milk, because that's too milky, but like yeah. really like a, like a pudding, rich. Like a dessert milk chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on a cake or something. That yeah, like, you know, like that. a chocolate ganache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Yeah. Creamy-ish. Yes. Yeah, it's all about that creamy texture. There's yeah. just one got... Yeah, it's got legs. Yeah, figured it would. So, it's a bit early, but I'm going to go into my story. Uh, do you want to just... just... Um, do the scars and then go on to your story. Oh, yeah, I should probably score it. Um, I quite enjoyed this one though, so yeah. I'm pushing it to probably a four. Yeah, I'm gonna go four because I mean, it's this. This is just a whiskey for us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Just twelve years in a whiskey barrel. I need to get well, that one that's twenty six. Most, most, most twelve year old whiskey spent twelve years in a whiskey barrel. <laughs> this one hasn't. No, it's spent it in a sherry barrel. Yeah, but it becomes a whiskey sh- barrel when you put the whiskey in it. But yeah. Yeah, well, that's a good point, actually. We had to sue them. They said it was in a sherry barrel, but this is clearly whiskey barrel. It's full of whiskey. <laughs> I'm sure Chris will keep sending us boxes for us to do the podcast after we sue him. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we'll sue him for. What, not sending us boxes after? Free, no, we'll sue him, but the outcome will be free boxes. <laughs> right, yeah. Just for cash settlement. Yeah. Basically, we want to sue you for a sponsorship for life, and the sponsorship <laughs> only consists of sending us the bottles until your business goes under, or if it doesn't ever, no. then we just get until no, we die. Even if it goes under, I want you to keep just sending the bottles. <laughs> He's got a lifelong commitment to send yeah. us six grams a week. I want it tied to his family name, so like I've got my grandson just still receiving whiskey bottle, whiskey bottles, and, effort and no knowledge of why. You'll allow them to renegotiate to a full bottle of one whiskey a month. If, if so I, mean. I feel that's a really that's a strange renegotiation to go from like oh, five. Well, and it might be, if they're only sending you twenty five mils of each whiskey, they're probably still having to buy at least a bottle of each. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to renegotiate. Um, I think it's more insulting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Did you say four as well? I did, yes. So I will let, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. I just thought no, no, while we were on no, this... Yeah, it's good for one of us to keep the structure at some point because otherwise I mean, it just descends. We start talking about shamo guys and stuff. So. 
Did we ever talk about the Shamrock guy? I think we yeah. did, didn't we? Yeah. Well, and Billy Dees was dead like... or something. And... <laughs> <laughs> we ended up spending like 15 minutes talking about that, didn't we? Yeah. It's a podcast. You're allowed to be like... Yeah, again. Do it again. Uh, yes, go on to your story. That's okay, the least. Yeah, so... Basically, I was I was roughly segueing in when you were talking about legs because, um, well, I'll intro and then I'll you know, it'll become apparent why. So, um, okay. yeah, uh, I was supposed to be going to a birthday party, but some the person whose birthday it was got locked down because people a bar in their city decided to not have any social distancing and uh, gave them an explosion of cases. So instead of going to the birthday party. Um, my partner and I booked, well, my partner, she booked a trip away to uh, Speyside, essentially, up in the, sort of near the Cairngorms, it's more towards the Aviemore side, but it was in a town called Grand Town on Space. so if you want to argue that that's not Speyside, then I'll, I'll argue, you know, uh, what's the word for how words come around? What are you going to do? Uh, uh, etymology. Yeah, I'll argue etymology with you on that this one. This is the hill you'll die on. Yeah, uh, well, maybe, yeah. But yeah, so um, uh, the, it was a little, we went to a little bed and breakfast. I say little, it was, there was like, I think probably four uh, double slash twin rooms, depending. So maybe two and two. Which um, helps. The B&B, yeah. yeah. Sounds nice. Uh, it's called uh, House Alba, house spelt the German way, uh, in uh, Grand Town on Space. Where is the house? Yeah. All right, yeah, I should have known that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but then after she booked it, she discovered that they also do. Well, the guy, there's a couple that own it, and the guy is a whiskey ambassador, and he runs tours. So he takes people to tours and does tours of the area on the way to them. So you know, if you book a tour, you can go there, and he'll take you to the tour. You have to pay him, obviously. He's not just doing it out of the goodness of his heart on a, you know, forty pound room or eighty pound room or whatever. He's not taking you halfway across the country to go galvanting for free, but mm. he'll take you on stops along the way and you know explain the heritage and culture of the area. Um, but he also does tastings in the B and B, so uh, we were booked on to one of them, and uh, because my girlfriend, I'm just going to say that it's easier. Uh, doesn't you, like you decide. Yeah, apply. doesn't like. Well, she's got a checkered past with history uh, with whiskey, uh, so everyone's got a checkered past with history. That's literally how history works. But um, and the past, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, she was. Kind of, we decided to do the space side one because everyone knows space sides are the the most enjoyable and easiest accessible whiskeys. I would say, generally. Yeah, some people say big. We say best whiskey. Yeah, well, if it's the mo, it's it's like the Gene Simmons attitude to what is good music. It's most popular, easiest to enjoy. Should be is the best music. I mean, I disagree with him on that front because it's art. But you know, whatever. Yeah, if, if generally it's popular for, for reason, a reason, especially whiskey. But yeah, yeah. um, uh, so we got four uh, drams. We actually got five because, you know, everyone who loves whiskey loves to give you an extra dram. Mm. But um, it was a little tasting we did, and he explained some things, like like the legs, for example, um, how fast-moving legs is generally a, a lighter spirit, and uh, slow-moving legs will be a sort of richer, heavier spirit. Did you give um, away your expertise yeah, at was, any point? Yeah, I was banging in all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It was, I think it was, you'll find he wasn't uh, getting annoyed with me though. He was. We were having a discussion and drinking yeah. whiskey basically. And he was at uh, the whole time. Every time he was about to say something, he was saying to my girlfriend, "I'll be speaking to you most of the time because you told me your boyfriend likes whiskey, and if he likes it as much as you say, he probably knows all of these." And I also t- told him that I'd been to Aberlour, I'd been to Macallan, not for a tour. You know, I'd been to the restaurant at Glenfiddich. We'd been to been to a few, aren't we, in this time? Yeah. Well, I mean. I've been to or seen three of the four distilleries that he gave us drinks from, so you know yeah, it was good. pretty pretty difficult for me to not be like I do kind of know these things, but I was also how about that also, what you say? Yeah, well, he was like he had the four 
uh, whiskeys on table, and we opened with what is probably Josh and my favourite drinking whiskey, just a cheap whiskey that you know if you buy it, you won't mind drinking all of it. Good entry and, level whiskey, yeah. Yeah, it's the Avalor Tan. Um, which, but he gave me some news that I didn't know, which is that they're taking that out of production apparently. Mm, I don't know if that's insider information, but I feel like the distro of this uh, podcast is enough people that it won't make a difference. Yeah, it's stock um, up now. Yeah, basically, if you see it, probably buy it because they're not going to have it for much longer. Than... I then mentioned that my friend's favourite whiskey was also an Aberlour. It was the Buna, and he says, oh, that's my wife's favourite whiskey. His was Balvenie. He just the double woods, basically, he loves. It's Even though it's a low-level whiskey, it's his favourite. Um, but, um, yeah, so he then proceeded. We talked about Abelora for probably too long and talked about how the commercialisation of Glenfiddich and McAllen is a bit easy, not sure about it and all this stuff. It was very interesting. Then we moved on to... A Glen Spey 12. That's apparently not widely available to the public. Mm. Where is Glen Spey? Say Spey side. <laughs> um, I, I believe up? they might be in the same town as Glen Grant. Uh, Roughers. Yeah. Yeah, we went, we got a picture of Glen Spey, haven't we? We took think, a picture through the gate, did we? Yeah, I think that was where we were. Um, then. I mean, here's a sugarly peg here, but uh, we had a Glen Keith have now started releasing their own single malt, non-age statement. Don't be saying from... like that. You had to forget. You had to apologise to Glen Glen Keith. I have, but I was just saying that's why we're on a sugarly peg with Glen Keith because of you know might have went in a bit hard on them and it might have been a bottler that had picked a barrel that we didn't particularly like because yeah. it was very nice the Glen Keith noise statement and it's because they're so close to Strafila they have a lot of um a lot of casts that haven't went into any of the um what uh, Chivas Brothers blends right. lying around so they have a lot of good whiskey lying around basically that just didn't quite meet the requirements to meet flavor profiles or whatever so they've started doing their own uh, non-age statement whiskey which was very nice but also not currently broadly available I think you probably have to buy it at specific it's not in like public retail it's probably in gift shops in mm. Chivas Brothers distilleries so you might be able to buy it at Strafila for example because obviously they're linked yeah, and they're then right oh, on you go I was going to say they are right next to them, aren't they? Literally. Yeah. Well, so we had a discussion about how they share water and all that, because, mm-hmm. you know, just flexing my my knowledge. Yeah, try harder, mate. Yeah, and then he was saying how the next one, Josh, you probably wouldn't have liked it, it was actually the Glen Murray peated, and it was actually quite peated. Didn't we have that? Was that the one of the ones we had at the tasting at Murray? Uh, we might have done. We had a lot of the experimental ones. Yeah. Yeah, we had the PX cask one, didn't we? Yeah, and we had the cider cask, I think. Oh, yeah, we did. Well remembered. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay, sorry. No, no. It's a good interjections. I mentioned that, and he says he didn't like the cider cask, and he's not really sure. Glen uh, had... They'd had a few failures in their experimental ones, and uh, they're, apparently their master blender is no longer their master blender, but no one's really said why. Mm. Um, but, yeah. It's a shame if they did. I quite liked the cider cask. I thought it was fruity and fresh. But I'll have a look um, what his review of it was, if we've got it written down on the... Hopefully we have. Cider cask. Yeah. Uh, we gave it a three and a half. Yeah. So was... And we had we had the petered PX finish. Oh, so this was just the normal one, I think. But yeah, and you gave it. that a four, the peated PX finish. Yeah, well, I quite like this peated one as well, because it was very space ID whilst being peated. But um, he was saying how there's not that many peated ones, and I was like, well, unless you count... Um, what's it called? Uh, Baron Romack. Yeah. Unless you count them, and they always peat, but very mild, light, so light, light peat. He's like, yeah, that's. Well, then he does a peat. And week, then I was like, it? and of course, your favourite have a peat week, and he was like, exactly. 
And I was like, no, I'll, I'll stop speaking now because I don't want to, you know. Steal your thunder. Pretty much. You were on a speech and then I interjected. <laughs> I think I've just done that to you, haven't I? Well, that's fine. As I say, <laughs> it, this is the thing. There was no never no animosity about it because it's just people who like whiskey talking about whiskey. Mm. Um, and then after we'd had that and we discussed it and he dis- he was talking about how really as a whiskey ambassador their role is to say no matter how you want to drink your whiskey if you want to have it in cocktails if you want to have it half and half with water if you want to have it with a couple of drops of water if you want to have it straight even if you want to drink it with a glut with you know a single 25 mil measure in a highball with coke their job is to promote drinking whiskey in any way you know yeah um you know i mean me and you we we joke around about not having water with certain whiskeys and stuff like that but drink what you want how you like it yeah and he was also very he said that like for him in a tasting set and adding a couple of drops always alters it a little bit so you essentially get two drams for the get where it's going from with that yeah depends Um, how much to give you and and then we had as a he, he was like talking about cask strengths and he says mm. like the Buna and then he says in fact I've got a Buna here and he's like I was just going to show you you know because people don't often like people who don't drink whiskey a lot don't really believe that there's whiskey scutting about that are 63, 64, 65% as yeah, standard. Yeah different every every year isn't it yeah. it's cask yeah. but uh, he's like but since these have been you know first of all since uh, my girlfriend was enjoying whiskey which she didn't think she would. And since I was engaging so much, he was like, we can just, I'll, I'll give you a wee dram. And then he gave us a, a quite big dram. <laughs> um, it goes a long way as well, Abuna. Yeah. And uh, he was like, this one will help you get to sleep. Um, and I was like, I know. <laughs> um, and then we had that as well. So yeah, it was anyway, it was very good. I would recommend the House Alba to anyone who's going to the region. If, you, if you're having a holiday and you're willing to maybe you know, instead of doing it on buses like we were, if you're wanting to go to distilleries but you don't want to drive for a for a fee, you could maybe scratch off two or three in a day and he would do that with take you around them. And for you some certain a, ones he's, he's in the uh, he'll be able to go around with you like he's in a because he's a whiskey ambassador, mm-hmm. I believe. He also what? does a whole load of other things like rock climbing, mountaineering. The guy's ex army and he's got about a million qualifications. It was impressive reading the brochure in the hotel room oh and you also got a free dram of a of a blend um which was very nice i can't remember what it was called though i might email them and find out for the next podcast um but yeah that was um you got a free dram just when you got to the hotel it was in your room when we when we upload this one in like six to eight years do you want to give him a, a link to it yeah well um so yeah um i just thought i'd we, we usually talk about whiskey experiences that we've had, so yeah. it's been a while, cause especially with COVID, but finally allowed to go out and about. It's and nice that one of us at least has got out. To be able to get to them. So. I have such a checking out some of the Bristol ones. Yeah. A couple of micro distillers. Um, I got Steve, what do you call it? It's back open, that Black Rock. Yeah. Um, what did uh, your partner girlfriend think to Abuna? Oh, it was very strong. Uh, this this Abuna was special. Was kind of weird. This version, this batch, because mm. when you added a couple of drops of water, it actually made it feel more alcoholic. Yeah, because Abuna. So, like, the reason I like Abuna so much, other than it's a massively sherried whiskey, is it's the one that kind of got me into whiskey. Because when I was drinking at uni, at uni, I always used to go to the same pub, which did a load of different European beers. Yeah. And then at one time they had like a bunch of guest whiskies. And I was like, oh, I've always wanted to try whiskey, but never really tried it. And I was like, let's have a look what looks good. And then I obviously saw a Boona at like 60%. And I was like, mm, go on, I'll give it a go. And I'll obviously cough it back up. It'll be way too harsh for me. And I had it, and it was smooth. And I was like, wow, okay. And that was like what peaked, peaked my interest in whiskey to begin with. And then obviously that developed when you took me to Ockentoshan. Yeah. Um, but that's what kind of peaked it. Um, so... Yeah, I've, I've I've been fond of it ever since. So I wondered if uh, if your girlfriend was kind of like this is a bit much. Seen as you know, it was like a fifth whiskey that she'd liked. No, no, she did like it though. Um, Fair play. But yeah, Fair play. 
it was uh yeah, it was weird though because it was smooth. But then when you added the drops of water, which you would expect to water it down, it's almost like it broke a, it broke the bonds and they got it perfectly separated balanced the alcohol and then out. You ruined it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So it's something we'll have to check out at some point because we do need to check out that region again, don't we? Yeah, we've got some unfinished business which might take a year before we can actually get to. Yeah. Not because of Corona either, because of the bloody waiting list. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because that'll just if be. If anyone's back. wondering, we're talking about the Balvenie. Yeah, if anyone's anyone's listening, they've got invitations to Balvenie. We'll take them. Yeah. We want the full tour, including the <laughs> including the cooperage. Yeah, we're the... we're not after some like peasant tour. Yeah, all twelve trams. Is it twelve? Yeah, something like that. Christ, we'd be dead. It's over like four hours. I think we do yeah. that, and then we just go and go and make a barrel at the space like cooperage. <laughs> Whilst drunk. Yeah, and then they're like, "No, you got to try better." But you've got to try better. <laughs> My mate's called Cooper. <laughs> well, Andy won't do it when I raised it with him because he can't face the idea that if he did it worse than us. It. Yeah. <laughs> that does seem like, like a valid concern, to be fair. I get it. That's the good thing, you know, like, that my name doesn't mean anything, so Kawan. Yeah. What? what am I, I mean, I feel at? like it'd be difficult to be bad at, build it, at burning mills, but whatever. If, yeah, if you're the one who goes through with it, you win. Yeah. But it was, me and Andy might be like, whoa, we're not doing that. And then you're like, Side. in my blood, mate. Yeah. It's like uh, um, Norwegian black metal, but you don't hate the church, you hate bread. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing to hate, but yeah. <laughs> imposter food, you know, ruining our local cuisine, which is entirely based around bread. That damn foreign muck coming over here. <laughs> Back in the proper good old days, you used to just eat the wheat. Yeah. And they ruined it. I mean, I have a legitimate claim to why we should hate bread. Go on. Takes away all the, you know, barley and that from whiskey. Fair point. The sods. Yeah. I mean, wheat is more than common, but yeah. Yeah, but we can use a grain as well. Yeah. Right. Whiskey number three, do you reckon? Yep. It's about time. Oh, it is, yeah, getting patched. So this is um, obviously another Douglas Lang, Clan Denny, Jura 2008 vintage, 11 years old. Clan Denny is a well-kept secret family member in the Douglas Lang whis- whiskey clan, being owned by sister company Douglas McGibbon & Co. and not as prominent in the UK market. Don't let that lack of prominence fool you. Their releases are well worth tracking down. This Jura is no exception, and with just 321 bottles released, enjoy it while you can. Oh, cheers, Chris. Another rare one. Um, so on the nose, it's oh so blonde, but oh so sweet, and sugared on the nose, ahead of some crisp spice. What do you get from the nose? It's very Monomie, sweet. Very, very sweet. sweet. Okie dokie. I'd say there's maybe like a vanilla spice at the back, but maybe cinnamon. Let's uh, have a smell, and while you dive in, it is uh, the multi palette. Is equally dulcet and maple syrup in style with a later spiced dryness. The finish is the same spices and now more dominant on the finish. That's interesting in a it nice way. Very sweet, yeah. Very, uh, that's a vanilla kind of sweetness on the nose, I would say. Vanilla sweetness on the nose. And I'm going to dive in, so describe what you're tasting. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like a very, it's quite. A creamy, maybe that's the sort of maltiness, I suppose, um, yeah. in there. And then there's a, yeah, it it does dry, mm. like, but I'd say it's more in the finish that the dryness comes in. It's like a spicy dryness yeah, it takes, in the finish. It takes a while, yeah. That is yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. Mm. It, like, it's ve- I think it, I think that is a very mm, like. That's the malty flavour, really, isn't it? Like that's like if you took the inside of a Malteser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will give you that. I'll, I'll, not the inside of a Malteser, but I'll give you biscuity. The, yeah, malty biscuitiness. But it's like a sweet malty biscuitiness. That's it's not like it, yeah. It's like a, more towards like a rich tea than a digestive. Yeah, sweet malty biscuitiness on the palate, which dries in the finish. Mild spice. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I've pretty much down that one. I really like that one. 
What would you give that? It's probably like a... I'm between 3.5 and 4 on it. Mm. I'm going to go 3.5 just because it's not as good as the previous one. I would say 3.5 as well, yeah. For me, that, that sherried one just took it because sherried. Pretty much. This next one looks like it might have a bit of a shadow influence. Not that it's going to matter to you. Burnt the color Christmas you... cake is still burnt. By the colour, you mean? Yeah. Mm. So another thing that uh, I'm, I learned um, yeah. was um, obviously you know the um, the caramel colour that they add. It's like yeah. a new number. Yeah. It's the fourth acceptable whiskey ingredient. Is it? Yeah. Um, like, I think the majority of, like, single malts don't aim, like, aim not to use it, essentially. Mm. So, usually, if you've got, like, a, like a, it's unlikely, I imagine, that Douglas Lang, when they're doing limited runs of casks and stuff, are bothered into. Yeah, I think if you've got a name and you're known to be quality, yeah. then no one's going to pick it up I and be like, this more, one's pale, so it's I think crap. it's more acceptable used in blends because it's like to maintain the... When you're getting a whole load of whiskeys from a whole load of different places, to maintain your brand colouring. Yeah. Yeah, it's a brand thing, isn't it? You know, yeah. If you're making like a, a Southern Comfort or a Jack Daniels or a you know, something like that on mass scale, then there are going to be colour variations, but the the market that you're aiming it at is probably just going to get that and then compare it to another bottle and be like, these are different colours, something's wrong. Yeah. So you just, yeah, makes sense. Go on then, let's, let's crack on, let's keep the pace. What would you say? Uh, we've done this, guys, sorry, I don't know why I'm asking that. What do you say to introducing the fourth one? I'll, I'll say... I'll... I will do, because we've done the scores for the last one. That was a good segue. I don't think anyone will have noticed that I <laughs> stumbled a little bit there. Okay, up next, we have the single-minded Carol Isla, 10-year-old. Again, obviously, Douglas Lang. Yep. So it says here, <laughs> one of the great things... Shred about... the palate. <laughs> one of the great things about independent bottlings from well-known distilleries is the opportunity to explore a new taste on their typical flavour profile. With single-minded releases being super small batch, just two to four casks each, this is certainly true of this bottling of spirit from famous Isla distillery, Cal Isla. Have fun spotting the similarities and revelling in any new notes you can detect. Oh, yeah. So, you know, this is why Josh isn't going to be a, you know, as worried, because it's an Isla, but Cal Isla, notorious for being... Not yeah, the, the one peated one is going to be picked. Read the palette. Yeah. Well, I suppose do the nose. Well, do the nose. The nose is immediately full of smoky bacon. Oh, sorry. The nose is immediately full of smoky bacon crisps, which is different to normal smoky bacon. Mm-hmm. Burnt woods, bonfire embers, and summer tar. Yeah. I'd, I'd say that's pretty accurate. I'd say there's definitely a smoky bacon. It's like a barbecue smell, like but not like a barbecue sauce, like an actual barbecue. Yeah. So barbecue smells on the nose. Okay. Yeah. And then... Let's write that down and then I'll dive in while you, you talk. Dive is... in, I'll read the palette. Uh, yeah. The delicious palette reveals ash, dried earth and peated barley. Lovely. Mm. The finish goes on and on with streaky bacon, burnt buttered toast and honeycomb. To be fair, not the worst things to have a finish of, but it's... You're probably going to disagree and say it just tastes like ash the whole time. Okay, so... Everybody knows it. You tell me what you get. The initial taste is not a lot. There's not a lot there. The finish goes on and on. It's still going now. And it is quite... It's like smoked bacon, that kind of flavour. So it's not my cup of tea, but it's not the worst, if you know what I mean. I get the bonfire embers on the scent. Yeah, yeah. That's mad. That's a very good... It is a very good card, this one. I don't get the ash and dried earth, but I haven't been in my job long enough. I, t- uh, I taste that every day. It's um, definitely like a streaky... Like a smoked bacon rather than a streaky bacon. 
right at the start there's an ashiness? Mm, maybe. Like, have you ever been by a fire? No, I'm always cold. And then, you know when, like, the little floaters of ash, that, like, they come up in the... Yeah. They're not hot anymore, basically. Mm. I've had, I've tasted that, like, it's, I've had it, it essentially blown towards my face when, when you're I was burning speaking. Your mills. Obviously, I was speaking because I'm me. When you're burning mills. Don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> the anti-bread league is not ready for, uh... <laughs> Yeah, anti-bread league. ABL. You're on cool for it. Yeah. Are you like like the the militant spin-off of like the pro bright like pro rice brigade or something like that? Yeah, pro potatoes. I hate those guys. The pro potato patrol. The pro potatoes. Oh wait, I'm trying to think of how to make it the PLF, but I can't be bothered. Um. <laughs> Tate Liberation Front. Yeah. Um, so palette wise, uh, other than the ash, I did get a sort. I didn't get dried earth, but and I used to play rugby, so I know what that tastes like. Mm. Um, Not in Scotland. There's no dry earth in Scotland. We, we had two sunny days. <laughs> earth died by that point. Fair. So I'm putting barbecue smells on the nose, light ash to begin. Very long finish with smoked bacon. Any flavours you would like to add to that? Let me know. Oh, yeah, I've just drank the last of it. All right, sorry. Sort of getting the buttered toast vibe. Okay. With smoked bacon and buttered. Oh, wait, wait. We'll do it this way. With a smoked bacon. Sandwich. Possibly, yeah. That but makes smoke, sense. Smoked bacon toasty because it's butter toast yeah. flavour. There we go. That's how you combine words. Uh, it's because it's got that, you know, oily creaminess to mm. it. And that's what makes the burnt flavour feel like the butter toast, I think. I don't know. Yeah, could be. Could be. It's an interesting thought. What would you stick that one as? Quite enjoyed that, to be honest. Uh, three and a half again, probably. Three and a half again. We're going to go lower. I'm not going to argue with it. I would. I understand. I'm going to give that a three. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't hate that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of smoked meat, but it is something that I can have. You know, if I had Especially a smoked bacon. If I, well, I prefer unsmoked bacon. But if I had a smoked bacon sandwich, I wouldn't be like, get it away from me. I'd enjoy it. I feel like smoked bacon is better for bacon. cooking sometimes. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Yeah, because it holds its flavour better. But in like a bacon sandwich, unsmoked all the way. For me. So, yeah, it's all right. It's not bad. Right. Uh, I will introduce us to his next one. We really can't run through him now. Picking yeah. up. Um, well, so we this... spent a lot of time on the old uh, story in that. It was a good story, though. Um, so this is another Douglas Lang, Remarkable Regional Malts, Rock Island. An absolute coastal and smoky flavour bomb, Rock Island celebrates some of the very best of Scotland's whisky-producing islands, with liquid from famous offshore distilleries Jura, Arran, Orkney and Islay. Probably our favourite in Douglas Lang's regional range of blended malts, and certainly remarkable. So on the nose, you should have wave-soaked rocks, and a salty, oceanic, fresh influence. I've had one of those caps that doesn't come off. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the, you were mocking me for that before. No, you know where the serrations don't serrate. You were mocking me for that. Record, no, fix it. Uh, yeah, do you, if you smell the ocean, do you think it's a fresh smell? Because I don't think it is. Uh, I think it depends. I think if there's a lot of seaweed about, it doesn't smell that fresh. But if you Maybe it's just like the that, English Ocean. If you're... In a more. Um, and the problem with like the English Ocean is if you're near it, there's like 700 people within like a square inch of you. So yeah, even during coronavirus. Yeah, stupid press. Um. Yes. So on the well, nose. Yeah. Dover hasn't had a had to go back into lockdown, so I suppose because they all took it back home with them to Leicester and <laughs> <laughs> the north. 
<laughs> Turns out Leicester just went on an exodus. Yeah. I get the brininess. I get the. I get the sea influence from that. Yeah. These tools, and now I'm into the bottom. Definite sea influence on the nose. Sorry. Okay. What do you reckon from the nose? Yeah, I can get that. It's. If you told me it was from islands, I wouldn't say that that was. It conjured up image. I like the wave-soaked rocks. I, I think it conjured up those kind of images. I think that's a good a good image. So I'll let you dive in on the palette. You should have a subtle. Oh, so the palette should be subtle, carrying soft and rather sweet peat, paralleled with smoke, honey, damp ash, licorice, and late pepper. The finish is all of what went before is neat, neatly replicated in the Moorish finish. So why is that? That's just a continuation, then. That's not a finish if it's just the same. There's not, like, two parts to it. Yeah. So often they wouldn't sit, mention anything if that was how it was. But Yeah, sometimes they just don't put finish on there, do they? It is kind of smoky, but I'm not sure if that's just a... You know, holdover from the... Um, There's a very kind of mild peat there. Mm. I'm super sensitive to peat. There's a definite mild peat. There's a little bit of pepper in there, a little bit of peppery spiciness. But I'm not really getting any smoke. I'm getting peat. And I'm getting spiciness towards the end. I could say licorice would be a valid. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That kind of bitteriness. Mm. Then the pepper is sort of like a slightly warming spice, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like a... pepper. Yeah. So on the nose, pepper in the palate. Oh. Uh, push it. <laughs> You're going to sing for us, are you? No. We should have a musical interlude in each episode. <laughs> With us two. Yeah, I'm, I'm known for being able to change my voice. Yeah. And well, I'm obviously I... a multi-instrumentalist. Are you the, you're the uh, vocalist. I'm just a... Um, back up man, Anna. Are you the hype, hype man? Hype man. That's Bye fair. Yodo. We also thought it'd be funny talking to my flatmate earlier that if every time, like they said radical, like Boris Johnson said radical, he went radical. <laughs> like he's just in a speech and, you know, like they're like, unveiling... Radical unveiling Islam. Radical. <laughs> like they're unveiling <laughs> radical new measures for the NHS. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah we're, and we're unveiling radical new measures for the NHS. And like, can, can, can you just repeat how you said that? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, they were unveiling radical new measures. <laughs> Especially if he did like the Hand finger side. movements. Yeah. Or like did a surfboard pose every time he said it. Kickflip. You could ruin radical Islam and radical, like <laughs> all radical um, like extremists. Well, yeah, yeah, everyone who's an extremist. Ext- you don't even have to be a religion, does it? Yeah, really? any extremist, if you just did that every time radical. you described them, they'd hate it. Yeah. Right, so. Just to there you go. That's how you solve the um... Middle East. Well, any any extremist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to use it in the Middle East, you could use it. You know, Northern yeah, Ireland. Uh... Just think, just think about the extreme right wingers over in America. And if every time they were described on Fox News, some guy went radical. Yeah, the, not the taking seriously. Radical conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> That's like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, what were we saying? We were saying it it is quite soft. I'll give it that. Soft flavours of peat, licorice, and a late blooming, mild pepperiness with a medium finish. What would you give that? I don't think that was as good as the last one, so I'm going to go to three. Three. I thought that was pretty equal to the last one for me, so I'll give it a three as well. I just uh, stumbled upon an additional new card provided by uh, the Dram team here. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately we've missed it. Got a bone to pick. What, them doing the... Virtual tasting live stream here, eh? Yeah, Yeah, they're doing quite quite regular now. Yeah, he's got his own thing on YouTube. Sounds to me like someone stole someone's idea. (laughs) Um, 
I'm willing to sue. Can we settle out of court like... for a free dram team for life? Maybe we ought to put a um... a link in the description, like in the first comments. We ought to put a comment on his videos, just be like, "It's a nice channel you got here." <laughs> Shame if something was to happen to it. Yeah, yeah. Don't become a billionaire by buying people out. <laughs> Yeah, that's a maybe, Simpsons reference for everyone who didn't get it. I guess maybe we could do it like we could do it as Dragon's Den plan. <laughs> you know, and just make it so that every top poster comment on his videos is just us ruining him. Yeah. So it's just like every time he's like, oh, what suggestions would you like for next time? We're just like, we'd like six bottles of a booner. <laughs> that should be, and then every or single... could just be like totally passive aggressive and be like, oh, you know. It's a nice, maybe uh, you could uh, do five minute craft. Oh, wait, there's already a YouTube channel for that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just look that up. <laughs> Let me just check someone isn't doing what you're doing before you totally steal their idea, huh? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, the, no, that's okay. They're a big channel. We know you only like to crush small channels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, all in jest, really. But, you know, if you want to send us the free drum teams, we will take them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All in jest, but with no shame. Link us up with like a free sponsorship to get us big. We'll do the live streams for you. Yeah, if we can make a living out of this, we would happily quit his jobs and just travel around getting blasted. I don't even need it to be that much of a living, you know? It'd be nice to get some, some whiskey out of it occasionally, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I mean, like, if you want well, we to pay me to... a salary, that I'll take, like... We have got some whiskey out of it. Yeah. We've got that 25 mil bottle of Glenkey. Yeah, we, we've already managed to get him to budge. We well, made that out of this podcast, so now we're. So, anyway, to... my least favourite whiskey is Avalo de Buna. If you could send me a 70 <laughs> cent a litre bottle of that. I don't I'd know. Hate. It's that like 60 year old Macallan that I can't stand. <laughs> oh, it's actually um, the uh, uh, Winter Storm. I'm not a big fan of that. So. <laughs> yeah, I or hate... I, Actually, I really hate Freya. Yeah, that Freya, that's any 60 year old Macallan, to be honest. To be honest, anything from like a prestigious distillery that's over 40 years old, I can't stand. Or, you know, a limited batch. Yeah. I feel like it's pretty pretentious and wanky. And anything that's over like five grand a bottle, it's not interested. Uh, what, what about that bottle that's in uh, Glen Grant? Yeah. Don't yeah. wouldn't want that. No, <laughs> I'd hate that. <laughs> Do you want to introduce us to his final special dram of the of the podcast? Then I suppose I could fire it away. After that I mean, subtle, subtle psychological probe we've done there. Yeah. <laughs> All in jest, but you know, if you want to do it. <laughs> um. So the final sixth dram, the special dram for the sixteenth uh, whiskey podcast is the uh, extra old particular. From Gervin, which is 30 years old. Oh my! Well aged single green whiskey. No, 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 you got to do it in like a jar of decay. Oh my! There you go. Well aged single green whiskey is a particular joy for Dram Team founder Chris. And he is extra, that's spelled without an E, just like in the whiskey, uh, excited to be including this three decades aged Gervin in this set. Weighing in at an impressive 180 pounds RRP and with just 230 bottles produced, it is a treat more than worthy of our dream dram spot. Savor and every wonderful sip. And that, I'll cheers to that. That's yeah. Okay, take back everything we just said. Cheers for the hundred and cheers for the expensive and incredibly rare whiskey there. Thirty year old whiskey. It's, it's we've we've had a lot of whiskeys in these. That we wouldn't try because we wouldn't have picked them, but also just that we did never it. never tried. Yeah. Yeah. Because Even if we had access. all the time in the world, yeah, we wouldn't ever have gotten hold of it. That's the benefit of, of being something like that. That's why this is a very. This is why. This is a enjoyable experience for me every week. Every week, I wish every yeah. month. It's because we're having to catch up and we're doing it weekly. Um, Not that we'll get uploaded weekly, but no, they might do. Never well, we never know if we actually catch up properly and get back into a steady drumbeat. But yeah, this is this is why we enjoy doing this. We don't we don't like each other. We hate each other. Yeah, but you have to find someone who'll drink whiskey with us. Yeah, exactly. And we're both quite awful people. So <laughs> yeah, once we found that first person who was like, "Whiskey's all right," we we're like, "Right, okay, that's it." Let's we get absolutely 
absolutely blackout drunk at like three in the afternoon in Bristol. I don't know if you were that bad because you managed to get us a taxi. I'm sure you must have got the taxi. Yeah, I remember. You, I had to make you hide around the corner, but don't talk about that. Did you? Yeah. Why? Because you were like passing out, falling asleep, stumbling everywhere. Ah, oh, that would make sense. Yeah. I, I, was... I, I, I was also pretty bad, but I was able to do the act sober enough to get in a taxi routine, whereas I think you were just past the act sober enough to get in a taxi routine. And how did I get into the taxi then? Well, I opened the door and I was like, come on, Josh. And then you came around and got in the taxi and he was probably like... Well, I didn't throw up in the taxi, so that's No, you didn't. We were... I mean, as far as we remember, we never did. Yeah. Yeah, that was very drunk that day. Yeah. I mean, it was a good time, but I feel like next time... We, we, I feel like we, we were have... a little bit late and it was a very contracted time scale that it was only yeah. like been for like four hours. I'd have we... been happy with like the stream mash kind of level of drunkness. Yeah. Well, that was because that was open for a lot longer. Yeah, and to be fair, the next day after the smash, we were pretty much okay, weren't we? Yeah, went to the gym. A little bit, yeah, we were a little bit hungover, but all right. But the day after the Bristol one, I couldn't move. Well, I don't think we uh, particularly took, and we didn't. We went out after the Edinburgh one. Yeah, we went and got a burger and went to the. Got a burger. Yeah, we were out until the last train, weren't we? Yeah, so like we. That's what I mean by like. I think it was just that we. There wasn't enough time at the Bristol Whiskey one to do everything we wanted to do, so we just decided to do it quicker. Yeah, and, and then have a good idea when you're drinking. <laughs> How many do you reckon we had in that? Twenty-five, probably, and it was like three hours. Yeah, it was a it's lot. Like a bottle of whiskey down in like an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, and there was some definite like cast strengthers in there. Yeah. On an empty stomach. Yeah, because we woke up late, so we didn't get any breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was rookie mistakes all around. We'll know better for next time. If there is a next time, you know, coronavirus might put an end to that sort of stuff. Well, maybe they'll do it like they send you out their whiskies, like taste a sample of like twenty whiskies or something, with like a whole load of paperwork. Yeah, well, skills. send yeah, send you out the boxes and a digital. Oh, you know, a virtual master classes, virtual whiskey festival. That'd be pretty cool. Chris is doing his virtual tastings. Why can't you do a festival? Here, wait. People on YouTube, don't steal our idea. <coughs> Chris. This is copyright because we spoke about it on YouTube. <laughs> well, you have to give me the card so I can upload it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can't steal it until we upload it. So maybe. Yeah, fair point. We should never upload it. Maybe we slow roll this one until we find a way to like set up a virtual whiskey. Copyright festival. an idea. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. We set up the virtual whiskey festival. Once you're the first one, everyone else knows everyone else is a copycat. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, okay. Just got to build some connections. Yeah. Well, you have a good connection. We're, we're good pals with Chris. We didn't just like I threaten need to, email to like, him, actually. I am, I am, his business. I and... feel bad. I haven't emailed him in a while to see how he's doing. I should I should do because he's, he's very, very nice. So I, no, I think it's a bit stressy trying to keep this set up going. I was just going to email him to say thank you for keeping keep us going. going. Yeah. But I mean, like, you've obviously had issues before. Can't imagine if anything like that crops up in a time like this, it's easy to resolve. Mm. No, he's done a good job. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to dive into the last one then? We'll get, what did we we'll get, get on the this one done. We've got a lot, a lot of work to do, you know, writing cards and stuff. So, mm. uh, The nose for this brings a vanilla fudge character with milk, milky cereal and rhubarb, apparently. I get fudge, definite fudge. He stifles a laugh. Um, <laughs> Shut off. <laughs> uh, palette. The creamy palette bursts with toffee, apples, pineapple chunks, and syrup and cinnamon. So toffee pears, you see. And then the finish is long and warming with polished oak, barbecued bananas, and runny honey. So I quite mean, fruity. This is very good, and this is different to anything I've ever tasted. I'm excited. Yeah, it's very good. On the nose, you can almost tell that it's not malt. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a slightly different scent to grain alcohol. Like, even though obviously it's a different scent to all whiskies. Like, there's a, there's like a baseline that's not there almost. I think it's, yeah, I, I get what you mean. I get strong apple flavors in that. Like, apple slash pineapple. I get that. It's 
kind of start, starts off as Apple and it develops more into like like it pineapple. actually does burst yeah but like I get the I, yeah it, it's like tinned fruit yeah it's like a fruit salad yeah yeah that's perfect strong fruit salad flavours that's the pineapple chocolate syrup yeah 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 <laughs> Definitely get that. And especially through the finish, I'm getting it more as I speak. I'm getting a honey ish back end, which is like syrupy anyway, but it's. Yeah, honey on the back end. I don't really get the um, barbecue bananas. I can get what they mean because it's like cooked banana is like kind of caramelized. I don't think they mean like, you know, when you like, have you ever had a barbecue? Yeah, yeah. And that, like just off a grill, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of get. It. I don't know if it, I would maybe say it's closer to barbecue pineapple. Yeah. There's like know. a different, slightly charred, but not really flavor in there. Okay. So I've got fudge on the nose, laughed it up. Strong fruit salad flavors, honey on the back end, wood flavors underneath on the end. I got kind of a. Yeah, and yeah. I've, I've given you, for your comment, barbecued pineapple at the end. Yeah. That was very interesting and very nice. Yeah. I think this has got to only have one score. Four and a half. Four and a half. Don't think we have a five. Uh, I think there's like one five in the whole thing. Have I given in a boot or a five? I have, <laughs> yeah. I might have gave something else a five. I might. If I tried it, my Abuna now, it probably wouldn't quite rate a five, but it's, it's historically. Can you get impact. a bottle to keep closed? I've got a bottle closed here. Yeah, good, good, because it's going up in price. Uh, yeah, I know, but it's, it's to drink. I just haven't opened it. I don't know, you should buy it. Wait, have you still got your. Did you open your, like, first batch? Yorkshire? No, you Oh, no, a Kazganam? No. Oh, yeah, it was Kazganam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I've got a first batch Kazganam that's not open. Because Sabuna's a bit older there. It's like... Yeah. I've got the first release from the Yorkshire Distillery and the second release and the two first. I've just remembered the other reason that um, the Abuna came out, which was discussing the concept of the misconception that a big number on a whiskey bottle means a good whiskey. Oh, yeah, because it's a noise statement. Yeah, because like, most of the best whiskies are Naz. In my opinion, there's some very. I mean, this last one was 30 years old and was fantastic, but it's yeah, it's, but it's irrelevant. That's a what good I mean. whiskey is a good whiskey. Some good whiskey requires age to become a good whiskey, and some doesn't. I would say that at my my comment is probably most of the most abundantly available good whiskey. Is yeah, nice yeah. You, guess what? You can bottle it at three, five, eight, twelve years. Doesn't matter. Cheaper, yeah. You can, you know. It doesn't have to wait till 10 years for you to then go and go, oh, we screwed the pooch, this bar- barrels went. Yeah, it's, it's, but it always comes back to that, like that uh, leaflet we got, that book we got from yeah. um, Gardner McPhail, doesn't it? Some whiskies don't age, they just don't, doesn't make them bad whiskies, just means you've got to get them out of the barrel quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and if you're snobby because it's not got a 12, 15, 18 on it, you're missing out on some fantastic whiskies. I gave a risky shout out to Sarah. Yeah. What did you say? It wasn't that risky. I said there was a girl from France who bent off wine because it was boring and came to. Oh, so you didn't say that she got your undying love then? <laughs> she, I can't say that now. I mean, she obviously loves me forever, but you know. Yeah. I've, uh, I've moved on. Yeah, I was very jealous that she just only had eyes for you. <laughs> it's just because I guessed that uh... you guessed that one that was, that was the competition for her affection she was like which one of you, yeah, uh, one of you am I going to fall in love with but not de- demonstrate in any clear way yeah. and uh, yeah you, you beat me and uh, why Sarah why couldn't it be me why couldn't you have given us a, a Bruna <laughs> <laughs> I would have got that one <laughs> maybe He'd be like, probably oh, not it reminds me of an Abelo, but... Yeah, that's too easy. I'm not going to guess that. Yeah, Probably... I think it was when we, when we stalked her to the pub that she was most interested. She did tell us that she worked... 
No, she didn't. That, that, no, she didn't tell us she went there. She told us that that was a good place to go. No, to she get... didn't. It was, it was Ben Mac. Oh, yeah, so it was. Yeah, she didn't mention it at all. We just turned up, and then she was like, oh, hello, you want to go to whiskey? And we're like, which one do you recommend? And she's like, this one that's like 17 quid for a single. We're like, we'll split it. Yeah. We were so sick of whiskey. Well, not sick of whiskey, but we were pretty whiskeyed out by that point. Not by that point, by the day after. like We, had, we were good. I think we were whiskey. That was the trip with... Uh, Dallas do and that and I think uh-huh. after Dallas do where you know the whiskey you got I'm pretty sure it was like a blend Not yeah it was that, it was like, Roderick do wasn't it yeah it was like an average whiskey hey an average whiskey after an exceptional film yeah <laughs> <laughs> no doubt <laughs> yeah um, it's a good tar though I liked the Dallas do tar no no Dallas do apparently it's no it's still running yeah but yeah, that, that I'd say Dallas do is valuable to anyone who doesn't want to fork or who can't get on the Balvenie trip to understand. I would say that if you want to know about whiskey and how it's made and how things influence stuff, yeah, that's the that's probably the best entry point. Yeah, because it's self guided, so you take yeah. time. Because we were, I'd say, we knew most of what they told us, but it was still interesting to see it. Whereas I yeah. think if you were if you drank some whiskey and you liked it and you were wanting to get more into the whole whiskey tourism side of things, I would say Dallas do is worth being an early stop. Yeah, definitely, because it's not producing. You can get close to stuff. Yeah. You yeah. touch stuff. Yeah. Go up and touch a... Find me a distillery where you can go and touch the still. <laughs> well, you don't touch it for long. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. They are running, and they will be running all day, every day, unless they're getting cleaned. I think the so... only... The only tar that I was more impressed with, I've liked, I mean, I liked the Abalawa tar. It's just Strathyla, because, I would say. And I liked Strathyla tar. But the tar I liked most, I think, is the Clyde side. That's more personable, I would say. I think it was just a more interesting way of running it. Like, the Abalawa and the Strathyla were very traditional tars with a tar guide. This is how we produce whiskey. And the the thing that, re- that I really like the Abalawa tar. Because I love, I like Abalawa, and I loved how it was very traditional. And Strafila was raised by the tar guide because she was fantastic. Yeah. Um. And and the tar was very good, but she was really good the tar guide as well. Um. But Clydeside had a really good. Tar- I mean, they all had really good tar guides, but um. But the Clydeside, I liked the kind of self bit at the start. Well, like the and, history of the whiskey mm, in Glasgow and whiskey in general. That was yeah. Pretty, but... You kind of wandered around that, and then you had the video, and then it was the general tar, and I, I really like that. Plus the tasting was great with the chocolates. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I'd like. I'm, I'm I think that'll be even they really better when they are producing their own whiskies. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to because go back when they do that. They'll, they'll be like doing their taste of Scotland. And yeah, like, and here's Glasgow. I'd like, like to. I'd like to go back when they start releasing. Shouldn't be long, should it? Should be right now. Mm-hmm. Can't yeah. imagine they've like shut down. It only takes like three people to run a story so yeah I have to keep his eyes open but um we should probably wrap it up wrap there it up, i suppose yeah. it's been a long one this one um, i mean we had some chatting to do and we had a good story to tell podcast in a free form art form so yeah some are longer some are shorter live yeah. with it it's like netflix <laughs> what you know when netflix distribute tv shows they don't put a 30 minute um requirement right, say, cause, right fine yeah, I wondered what you were on about. Anyway. They allow any. Um, Never mind. Thank you, everyone, as always, for listening yep. to our insane rambles. And if you have any suggestions, you can always leave them down in the comments, as long as they're polite. I mean, if they're um, not, the YouTube algorithm will probably like block them anyway. But... Well, if they're not, we'll, we'll, we'll probably deal with them. it would be nothing worse than we think about each other, so I wouldn't worry about it. One of us um, will be in support and one of us will be in condemnation. Yes. And um, we'll hopefully see you soon, depending on how quickly we can upload them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, we'll, I feel like we're getting on to the drinking them. Yeah, we're getting that, well. getting that pretty done now. Just just dude, a bit. I'm slacking on work as per usual. As usual, yeah. It's all his fault, so feel free to blame him. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Yep, cheers. Bye. Bye.